Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Good morning. welcome to the April board meeting. Uh, I'm live from Tifton, Georgia, at our DOT office. Before we uh, start, um, it, before I do the invocation and the pledge, I'm going to ask Kristen if she would by, do the roll call by congressional districts. I'm going to turn it over to Kristen, then also want to remind you to mute your phones uh, after you do the roll call. So mute it after the roll call, and then when you speak, you will need to unmute it. And don't forget, we will have three votes today, and I'm going to need motions in a second uh, on those. Uh, on those votes. But with that, Kristen, if you would go ahead and do the uh, roll call. OK, good morning. I want to start with Congressional District 1 and Purcell. I'm here. Congressional District 2, um, Johnny Floyd. Here. 3, Lynn Westmoreland. Here. Congressional District 4, Robert Brown. Present. 5, Stacy Key. Yes, the mighty fifth congressional is here. Good deal. Six, Kevin Abel. Here. Seven, Rudy Bowen. Here. Eight, Tim Golden. Here. Nine, Emily Dunn. Here. Ten, Jamie Boswell. Present. Eleven, Jeff Lewis. Here. 12, Don Grantham. Here. 13, Dana Lemon. I'm here. And 14, Jerry Sharon. Here. Thank, thank you, Chris. And wow, I believe we have 100% attendance. That's awesome. Thank everybody for calling in uh, in these unusual times. But with that, if you will, uh, I'm going to do, I will do the invocation. We will follow that with the Pledge of, Pledge of Allegiance. Dear God, as we come together as a group today, we ask that, that you place your healing hand on, on our state, and on our nation, and on this entire world. If ever we needed your love and your kindness and, and your mercy, it is now during these unprecedented times as we fight this insidious disease. We beseech thee as well for your wisdom and your guidance in this meeting. Amen. 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 All right, if you will, we will do the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic of the Republic, which it stands, one nation, one nation, under God, God, God indivisible, liberty, liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you again. Thank everyone for joining today and for calling in or tuning in. And uh, we appreciate it very much uh, as we continue to work our way through these, uh, as I said, unprecedented times. As we all shelter in place. I hope everybody is well and safe. And with that, I will ask for a motion and a second for the approval of the minutes from the previous meeting. Do I have a motion? Johnny, Mark. Florida, I approve. Robert have Brown, a second. I have a motion, I think, from Johnny and a second from Robert Brown. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, likewise. <laughs> Hearing none, <laughs> all approved for the March uh, meeting. With that, Commissioner, if you're ready, we are, I believe you're going to take all the take the entire program today. So uh, if you would, I believe you want to uh, report on the projects for the May letting. And 
Russ, I don't believe your mic is on. All right. Let me there you go. All right, let me back up. I was just saying it's a pleasure to be with you today, and I will present the uh, most of the reports that are usually handled by others just to try to simplify this effort. And we'll start with the May 2020 letting report. This slide shows that we have let 244 projects year to date. This is the distribution of project type with the largest percentage of that. 61% of those have been in the maintenance category. Uh, you can see the bridge category in the lighter blue at 16%. And you can see safety is 11%, roadways widening at 5%, and enhancements at 7%. Now we'll move to the next slide, which is on page. Here we have on page five, the dollar volume of projects, $790.6 million. And you can see the distribution back by fund source with 46% of those being in the maintenance category, 25% of those being in the roadway category, 5% in the bridge, excuse me, 21% uh, in the bridge category, 5% in safety, and about 3% by fund source in enhancement category. Now let me report on the outcome of the March 2020 letting results. We had advertised 29 projects at $157.3 million. The low bid awards totaled 26 projects at $123.2 million. And with the low bid with adjustments, that brings it to $128.1 million. There were three projects that did not advance, as you can see. Uh, one project was rejected in Irwin County that was on State Route 37, uh, which was a bridge replacement project. That bid was rejected and will be re-advertised this month. We had two projects that we withdrew from the letting prior to bids. One of those projects was in Barrow County at State Route 316 at State Route 11 Interchange Project. That project is again in this uh, April's letting. And then in Chatham County, we withdrew a project which was a capital maintenance resurfacing project on State Route 25 uh, from Bryan County line to I-516, and that project is advertised in the April letting <laughs> as well. So let me move now to the next slide, which would be slide seven, uh, which will introduce you to the May 2020 letting project for your consideration. These projects shown on the screen, beginning on slide eight, are in Congressional District order. This slide runs from Congressional District 1 through Congressional District 3. The next slide on slide nine goes from Congressional District 3 through Congressional District 8. On slide 10, Congressional District 9 through Congressional District 11. Slide 11, Congressional District 12 through Congressional District 14. Next slide on slide 12 represents the projects across the entire state of Georgia where represent representation by stars of the project type and location by county. And out of all of those projects that we just went through, which you were sent in advance of today, I'll just highlight three of them for your interest. Uh, one of the larger projects in the letting is the I-85 design bill project, which is widening from State Route 53 in Brazelton up to the US 129 exit in Jefferson, Georgia. This is a major freight freight corridor investment as US 129's exit is home to many freight distribution centers, including an Amazon distribution center, and what an important role all of those distribution centers are pay playing at this time. Another project I'd like to highlight over in Congressional District 13 is Battle Creek Road and Mount Zion Boulevard, uh, which is a major widening from two lanes to four lanes for about three and a half miles, includes uh, 
curb and gutter and sidewalks. Uh, very important project. Also, let me highlight an uh, important local LEP project over in Douglas County, which is Lee Road, uh, beginning at I-20 and traveling north up to State Route 92. This is a county road, but it's an important connector as it connects 92 to I-20, a very important road for Douglas County. And GDOT is only providing a small part of the funding for this project. It is local LEP, but we're glad to be able to help the county on this important corridor. And finally, I would like to highlight a project in Congressional District 14 on State Route 1, US 27 at Taylor's Ridge in Chattooga County. This is a slope repair project. This section of mountainous road has had a long history of settlement and slides over the years. It's currently neck down from three lanes to two lanes due to the slide. And this is the first phase to make permanent repairs uh, to this roadway, a uh, very important project. This is a represent, this pie chart represents 42 projects for the May letting. And you can see this distribution by project type. 22 of the projects are maintenance, which represents 52%. Safety projects uh, represent 29%. You can see the road projects represent 12%, 5% for bridges, and 2% for safety. This is a fund distribution of projects for the May 2020 letting. As you can see, the roadway category carries the day at 74%. Again, the largest part of that is the I-85 widening project. And then you can see the next biggest share is the maintenance category, then safety, and then bridges. So this represents the 42 projects. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen of the board, these are presented for your favorable consideration for approval to be left in May. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. Um, rather large letting us. Good news. Uh, any questions from members of the board for the commissioner on the letting? If not, do I have a motion for approval? So motion to approve. I Second. have a motion. Kristen, you can pick which one out of that group for the motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. I have a Johnny motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Hearing no opposition, the uh, May letting has been approved. Thank you very much, everyone. Next, uh, Commissioner, you're back up for uh, approval of the revision for the construction uh, work program. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. On slide 17, you can see 17 through 20, you can see the projects that we presented to you last month for your favorable consideration. This includes 21 projects of bridges, 20 additions, and one deletion. The one deletion was McIntosh Trail at Keg Creek in Coweta County. The county is advanced on that project. So these projects on these slides, 17 through 20, represent those 21 projects for your consideration uh, to for the board revision. So Mr. Chairman, I put this to you and for your favorable consideration. Thank you, Commissioner. Any uh, questions from members of the board for the uh, construction work program? Do I have a motion for approval? So move. Rudy Bowen. Have a Second. motion. Yeah. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed likewise. Hearing none, the uh, construction work program has been approved. Again, thank everyone. A lot of good bridge projects. Uh, with that, Commissioner, will you uh, take stage once again for your report? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll start as we always do with our state fund collections. For the month of March 2020, fund collections totaled $159.54 million. The breakdown on that was $145.2 in excise, $14.25 million in fees. That brings our physical year to date total to 
$1.5 billion. And the breakdown of that is $1.381 billion in excise, $142.79 million in fees. Compared to year to date from this year to last year, we are $18.36 million ahead of where we were this time last year. Now, we anticipate seeing our revenues numbers be reduced beginning next month's report, and this is due to the normal lag in collections and reporting that happens with EOR. So there is a little bit of a lag, so that's why we did see a increase. We will continue to operate with our amended fiscal year 20 budget as approved by the governor uh, through the end of this fiscal year. And I'll touch a little bit on traffic volumes later in the presentation. Our total employment figure for the month ending March 31st, 3,909 regular full-time employees, 91 hourly maintenance staff, Last month, we hired seven new employees, promoted 15 employees, and had 39 employees separate from employment. Let me now move into our professional services procurement update. For the month of March, we had 160 contracts valued at $48.9 million for engineering design and professional services. This brings our fiscal year to date number of contracts to 1151 contracts valued at 452.6 million dollars again this is all the work it takes to bring projects to you for letting all the preliminary engineering and right away activities necessary to get to projects to be let to construction lastly on slide 22 Instead of highlighting projects open to traffic as we normally do with a lot of photos, I'm just going to highlight one Im very important project that was completed last month, and it was the first GDOT-led TIA project in the Southern Georgia Regional Commission, TIA District. This was 7.2 miles of two-foot asphalt shoulder widening, patching, leveling, and resurfacing on Ware Street in Pierce County. Uh, this basically Ware Street makes a big loop from US 84 and loops back around to US 84 on the other end. The contractor was Everett Docks Graffing Company. The project was completed and finished up on March 20th. It represents a $1.7 million capital maintenance and safety investment in the Southern Georgia Regional Commission. And as always, we always like to report it was completed ahead of schedule and on budget. So congratulations to Kenneth and the TIA team and Southern Georgia Regional Commission for not only passing TIA, but for now getting the first project that we let out the door. So a fantastic outcome. Now with that, I would like to move into just a general agency update, and especially as it relates to COVID-19. I'm very proud of our GDOT team for continuing to operate as an essential function for Georgia. We are following the directives from Governor Kemp, the CDC, and the public health officials to reduce the spread of COVID-19, with over 40% of our staff now teleworking and others working staggered work hours. Essential workers, such as our maintenance crews, continue to repair and maintain our infrastructure while following sanitary practices and CDC uh, guidelines. All districts are playing a vital role and a very critical role in transporting medical supplies and other mission critical items for GEMA and the Department of Public Health. They are making daily trips, including weekends, supporting the efforts of our medical professionals. And I'm very proud of what role they are playing in battling COVID-19. Our traffic management center and districts have been supporting the COVID-19 messaging throughout the state with our message signs and also portable message signs. Our heroes and champ operators are still patrolling Georgia interstate while adhering to the recommending protocols as well. Very importantly, we have maintained our rest areas and visitor centers uh, restrooms to be open. The restrooms are being regularly deep cleaned throughout the day between the hours of 7 a.m. and 11 p.m. We have had a couple of maintenance service issues that have temporarily closed the rest area for a day or two, but thankfully 
Jim Clute and his team have got those back open very quickly. So again, a very vital role for uh, freight and logistics industry to have these public restrooms open along the interstates. I'd like to report that our state supportive services office over in Decatur is helping small business and DBEs with connecting with the Small Business Administration for loans as well as federal supported services are providing virtual training and web links to the Small Business Association as well. I'm very glad we've been able to provide assistance to our smaller contractors and our DBEs uh, in this most challenging time. We have held several joint meetings with the Georgia Highway Contractors Association and ACEC Georgia to discuss the continuity of operations of how each of their respective industries are responding and providing essential services to Georgia. These calls have been very beneficial and we certainly have uh, shared best practices with each other, not only from Georgia, but from around the nation. And I appreciate GHCA and ACEC for continuing to partner with the Department of Transportation. Now, let me just touch a little bit about traffic volumes. For the last week, traffic volumes were down somewhere around 45% statewide uh, on total. We ha happened to see less reduction in truck volumes though. Truck volumes are only down somewhere between 13 and 15% on average statewide last year, which shows that freight is still flowing through the state and certainly playing a vital role for uh, supplying Georgia for our needs. Now, on to a little bit of how we're operating internally. Our GDOT employees have adjusted with interdepartmental meetings being con conducted through Microsoft Teams and an increased usage through the intranet of MyGDOT, which houses our Experience U platform. Uh, this was recently launched as an internal tool that we told you about a few months ago. So our staff continues to figure out how to innovate and work very uh, efficiently while maybe not being at their normal desk. In fact, we keep hearing that our staff feel as, that they are just as productive, if not more productive, teleworking. So I would say things are going very well from an agency point of view. Now, as a reminder, just like today, we began live streaming the state transportation board meetings a few months ago. And so today we're doing that virtually through Microsoft Teams, as you know. So we're very proud of what a great job our IT team, IT team has done. I wanna personally thank Jeff Hill and his IT team who have worked tirelessly since this began a, more than a month ago now to make the Department of Transportation continue to be open for business very effectively and efficiently. So thank you, Jeff, and thanks to your team for the great job you continue to do. I also want to say a special thanks to Monica Ivey and our human resources team, as well as Sharon Morales, who is over our state safety office, for the work they've played to provide support and information, sharing COVID-19 information with all our staff, especially as it relates to the Families First Corona response, Coronavirus Response Act implementation. <laughs> <clears throat> they have provided, continue to provide a lot of good and necessary information to our team across the entire department. Now let me transition to uh, the next category, which is the state of emergency that was declared last month, which just ended at the end of last month due to flooding. It seems like a long time ago now, but we're still dealing with flooding from the last month. I know many of you have had county requests due to the flooding and due to the state of emergency, GEMA sought federal assist assistance through FEMA. It was recently determined that the FEMA threshold was not met. So we will be working with the governor's office on a response to the counties that had outstanding needs due to flood damage. And we are also seeking consideration for emergency relief funding through the Federal Highway Administration for the roads that would qualify. And there are certain thresholds that are required to qualify for federal emergency relief funds. So should you be contacted by counties or cities as it relates to the uh, flood impacts, let them know that we will be contacting them and continue to work with them on trying to help them in their recovery efforts. Now, this slide on slide 24, 
shows you the impact of State Route 112 in Wilcox County. This is our one state route that is still closed due to flooding from last month. And on slide 25, you can see the progress that our District 4 maintenance team has made. And I certainly want to brag on Van Mason and the District 4 maintenance crews for the work that they are doing daily to put this almost 800 foot of roadway back in, including those four large pipes that you can see on the left side of the screen or on page 25 of your handout. So we can see the progress being made. We understand that it may take three to four more weeks to finally complete this, include the final paving and putting guardrails in and getting the stripes on the road, but again, making great progress there in Wilcox County. So congratulations to District 4 for the great job that they're doing. Now, we have another state of emergency that you're all aware of that is a result of the severe weather and tornadoes that occurred on Sunday into Monday morning. This state of emergency lasts until May 13th, 2020. And if you can see on slide 26, uh, this is a very rare occurrence where there's actually a house sitting in the middle of State Route 74 in Upton County. This was between Thomaston and Yatesville, and this is just one of the tornado paths that were many across the entire state. I am very proud of our district's response for their swift response and having all the roads passable by the end of the day Monday. And remember that this storm did not even leave this entire state of Georgia until midday Monday. Uh, especially in the south and southeast part of the state. Our crews will continue to work through this week and next week, removing the debris from the shoulders. Uh, and I will tell you that on Monday morning at the maximum, we had 101 locations of road closures across the state on state routes. The cities and counties had 196 closures at one time. So this was, as you know, a large impactful severe storm and many tornadoes throughout the state. We also appreciate the state response from our friends at GEMA, Department of Natural Resources, and the Georgia Forestry Commission in the cleanup. In fact, I got a text from the governor this morning thanking GDOT, DNR, and Georgia Forestry Commission for their work in Upson County. The Upson County chair had provided him a thank you note uh, for the work of the state response. So again, Congratulations and what a great job our districts do each and every day and always respond in certain uh, of these tragic circumstances so well. So thank you. On slide 27, I'd like to close with some great news from the federal front as it relates to transit and aviation. On March 27th, President Trump signed the Coronavirus Aid, Relief and Economic Security Act into law. That is known as the CARES Act. And the CARES Act had many provisions, but also it included provisions for transit and aviation, as well as personal and business stimulus funding that many of you are aware of. So let's discuss transit nationally. The CARES Act provided $25 billion to recipients of urbanized areas and small urban transit, transit formula funds with 22.7 billion of that, 22.7 billion to large and small urban areas and 2.2 billion to rural areas. So what does that mean to Georgia? The CARES Act funds made available to Georgia break down in this way. $370.9 million will go to the Atlanta urbanized area transit operators. 26.58 million to other large urban areas such as Augusta, Columbus, and Savannah, for example. 75 million to the Georgia rural operators and 49.68 million to the small urban transit operators. The FTA's priority for the CARES Act funding is to support the operational expenses associated with the impacts of COVID-19 which really includes covering their operational cost to maintain service, making up for lost revenue due to the pandemic, purchase of protectional, personal protective equipment, otherwise known as PPE, and payment of administrative leave and operations personnel. 
The funds are 100% federal and require no local match. You all will be getting a CC'd on a letter that went out just this week where we sent to all the rural and small urban transit providers stating that this CARES Act funding will cover 100% of their operations beginning at the end of January of this year all the way through the end of June 2021. So this is really a great outcome that all our rural and small urban transit providers will be 100% covered for their operations. And this is truly a, a great day for them uh, that they're all still providing essential travel across the state for those uh, how many that are still operating. I believe we are at 17 uh, of rural transit operators that are not operational at this moment. Also in the CARES Act was funding for aviation. This Monday we joined a call with Secretary Chow and the FAA to discuss the rollout of funding for airports. There was $10 billion in CARES grant funding, funding over 3,000 airports. Georgia will receive $410.8 million for all airports in the state. The funding levels, the airports were determined by the FAA. Georgia has 96 eligible airports, including Hartsfield Jackson International, and seven commercial airports receiving that have scheduled airline service, including Albany, Augusta, Brunswick, Columbus, Macon, Savannah, and Valdosta. The largest, of course, is Hartsfield Jackson International, receiving $338.5 million. $3.44 million will go to our 88 general, avi general aviation airports across the state again by a predetermined amount uh, by the FAA. So we will be getting letters out to those general aviation airports uh, this week and we'll copy you on those letters as well with an attachment that shows how much each airport got uh, from the CARES Act. Again, uh, this is great news for transit and great news for aviation and GDOT's glad that we can be a part of administering these funds to the transit providers and to the airports across the state. Mr. Chairman and ladies and gentlemen of the board, that concludes my report and I will be glad to entertain any questions or comments. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, any questions from the board for the Commissioner McMurray? Mr. Chairman, I have one. This is Don Grantham. Go ahead, Don. Uh, Russell, what what are we doing? I know we're talking about all of the aid we're getting out of the federal government, and uh, what are we presently doing uh, in working with our contractors throughout the state uh, that are working on our tier projects as well as the state projects that we have been uh, passing and presenting uh, for approval, but. Uh, are they getting the maximum of work that they can do and are they also uh, being uh, paid on the schedule that we have been doing in the past? Thank you, Mr. Grantham, for that question. We are operating business as normal, so nothing has changed as it relates to the volume of work, the dollar volume of work, the quantity of work, or even our payment schedule. So we are operating uh, fully uh, effective as we always have been. So uh, it's very good news. And as I mentioned earlier, our budget is stable through this fiscal year because that budget had been previously uh, approved uh, by the governor. So we are operating on that through the end of this fiscal year. So obviously fiscal year 21 will be a different story and we will be in conversation with all of you as that begins to unfold and as we begin to understand what that impact may or may not be. And so we'll just continue to be in conversation and dialogue as that unfolds. Well, it, the reason I ask that question too, Russell, is that I have received uh, several phone calls and compliments, and I reiterate that compliments uh, to DOT uh, for the effort, the work that we're doing with the contractors and making sure that they are maintaining their status as far as the work goes. Well, thank you for that. That is certainly our goal is to keep Georgia open for business 
in a very different kind of way. But uh, and again, contractors, uh, the aggregate industry, the suppliers, the vendors, um, all have been very cooperative. Everybody is following the recommended guidelines. You know, everybody's working a little differently. We continue to innovate. In fact, that uh, our construction division and our materials and testing uh, office came up with a way that uh, truck drivers don't have to handle paper tickets, and we don't have to handle paper t paper tickets as well. Just to, you know, as an example of how we're doing business a little different. So, but able to continue continue the work. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Don. Any other questions from the board uh, for the commissioner? I don't hear any. I want to thank everybody for calling in. Uh, well, first off. Before I make any other comments, any new business from members of the board? Before I close this out, any new business? If not, Commissioner, let me say thank you to, to you and to the staff, and we apologize for the short shorter meeting. We have a lot of other good news to share, but tried to keep it short considering the circumstances and having everybody calling in and trying to be mindful of your time. But Commissioner, I want to say thank you to you and your staff mm -hmm. and uh, thank you for the shout out on TIA. We're very proud of that in South Georgia, but I also want to brag on District 4 a little bit since I'm sitting in their office. I uh, appreciate Des and Gary and the IT staff here putting everything together for me this morning. And I tried to get Van Mason to sit in here, but he's been shy. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but uh, he's probably busy trying to finish up Wilcox County, but I uh, appreciate the shout out as well on District 3. and. Michael Presley sent me the photograph of the, of the house in the middle of the road, which is probably a new one for us. But, uh, <laughs> but also uh, really just a, a shout out to all of GDOT. Thank you to all the men and women of this great department for your continued work in these unprecedented, difficult times. And we appreciate that very much. With that, if I don't hear anything else, Commissioner, do you have anything else? Now, I just appreciate everybody joining today. And, uh, Hopefully we'll be back to business as usual as soon as possible. If not, we'll continue to uh, innovate and do what we can do to keep continuity operations going just as smooth as they can go. Thank you very much. All right, awesome. Okay. With that, um, I wish everybody a safe uh, upcoming weekend. Stay well, and I can't wait to see everybody in person as well. I miss, miss seeing, seeing all of you. With that, if there's no new business, we stand adjourned.